Hello and welcome to Short and Sweet Revision. This is our next revision video in the anthology selection. And uh, But before we start, we thought we'd give you a few announcements. Yes, we've opened up a Twitter account, so you can come and follow us on the account. Um, our Twitter name is Ask, Ask You and Fern, all one word. Yeah. Ask, ask you, and firm. Okay. Very, very catchy. I think it you'll agree. is indeed. So <laughs> please feel free to follow us. Yeah, we'll be putting links to uh, these podcasts that we're making, and revision sites, and our students are going to be following us. So they'll be um, tweeting questions. And yeah, so and we'll get if you want to, you know, give us any comments or questions about some of the stuff we've been doing, um, please feel free. You can post it onto the YouTube channel that we've got. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'd like channel. to yeah. say thank you to the people that have subscribed yes. but we'd like some feedback wouldn't yeah, we I mean you know is it are you finding them useful are they helpful for your revision just um, let us know let us and know. subscribe to the channel okay right well let's get cracking then so today's story is my Polish teacher's tie by Helen Dunmore okay and what we're gonna do is we're gonna again look at the key features of the story and uh, end on a uh, peel paragraph type question um, to test your knowledge. Remember, what we're doing here is giving our interpretation, but ob obviously everybody who reads the story might see something different. So, we'll, uh, you know, we're um, not going to cover everything probably yeah. and the time lim uh, limit as well, but we'll with these recordings, best. but we'll yeah. do our best, yeah. Okay, right. So, um, plot summary. Yes. yes, a local school is having a teacher exchange with some teachers in a school in Poland, and the dinner lady is half Polish and she decides to become pen friends with one of the Polish teachers. But she's a little bit worried about this, isn't she, Miss? Of because, yeah. of because she feels, because she's only a dinner lady, would somebody be interested in writing to her, uh, somebody who's a teacher? And in this um, story, even the head of the school is, uh, you know, kind of has yeah. these preconceived ideas of where people should be kind of sticking to your own yeah. almost and I think it? this story is a real reflection of that within society is that there are these preconceived ideas and people feel that they can be marginalized and put into a category That's right. I mean the story begins straight away with I wear a uniform blue all, all over so I think she almost feels at this point that she's defined by the role that she plays That's as right. a dinner lady which is not the case and this is what she I think uh, discovers by the end. That's know. right. This does not have to define you. As no, a and she likes her job. She's not paid very much at all, we're told, but she does like working with the children, so she enjoys her job. Yeah, but a little bit of background first into Helen Dumas, so we can try and understand where she's coming from with this story. So again, we won't read you all no. this, but the key points that we thought were important. Um, well, she comes from a very large family, so again, she, uh, a lot of her writing often includes family relationships, relationships between people. With children, and also, like it says here that we've um, put into bold, a lot of the characters in her stories are typically mothers, lovers, and children, and uh, haunting hidden family secrets. Um, no family secrets here, because she's quite open about yeah. where she comes from, but there is that kind of bigotry and that... Um, ignorance if you yeah. like of understanding people from different places and different cultures mm -hmm. but we'll get on to that a little bit yeah. later and again if you just have a look at the bottom bit about the polish teacher's tie it says here that the polish teacher's tie shows how the course of a life can change by a single moment that's right it and can can't it exactly and this for carla i think it's the realization that she does not have to be mm -hmm. you know the the, the role that she's been forced to play she doesn't don't be yeah. determined by the the job you do or yeah. the clothes you have to wear for that job there's so much more to you yeah. as a person than that yeah okay good okay so setting again we have to consider time place and situation so we're set in england um it's in a secondary school and we've got a relationship between a dinner lady and a teacher going on we're not talking about a physical relationship no, here no this is just sort of a friendship um, and we're, we want to talk about expectations of place. Yes, your, your place in society, we yeah. mean by that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and, anything else? and social background. So this is one of the key points um, that come in here is, is um, Carla's kind of her own hang-up about the fact that she feels separate from a teacher, the dinner lady and the teacher. She doesn't yeah. feel equal. And, all, and also, not to blame her, it, you can kind of pick up on the hidden messages from perhaps the head teacher, from Valerie Kenwood, that yeah. perhaps... They feel like they are different. Yes, that they're expected to stay in their little social group or mm. in their place. Yeah. Yeah. 
And of course, they break out of it. Carla exactly. and Stefan break out of it, exactly. don't they? Good. Okay. Uh, moving on then. Points of view. Okay. We've said this before. Point of view is the person or the voice telling the story. We have a first person narrator here in the story. It is Carla. I wear the uniform. The use of italics in the story is the voice of either Carla or Stefan in the letters. I mean, we have another voice in here as well, which is the head teacher's voice as he's giving his announcements yeah. in the staff room to um, his staff. Yeah, so look at the dialogue as well, because we also learn about the thoughts and feelings of Valerie Kenwood later on through her conversation. Yes, so very interesting towards the end, isn't yeah. it, with her ideas, but exactly. we'll touch we'll on that yeah. a bit so later. Again, the important thing is that it, it is told through Carla's eyes, however, through the use of dialogue, we get to see how other characters feel and, and their situation. That's right. Yeah, okay. Character. Okay, so again, remember, you must consider physical description, dialogue, action, and direct comments. So here, there's lots of characters within this story. There are lots of named characters, and they obviously all have their place. Carla, the dinner lady. Uh, Steve, or Stefan. Uh, Jade is Carla's daughter. Yeah. We have the headmaster. And then we have these two characters, Valerie Kenwood and Susie Douglas, who have a conversation mm. at the end of the story. Yeah. About, I mean, it is quite interesting, that, and it's about the way people talk, and it's about people's accents. And um, there's one line, I know we're jumping a bit here, but it's, um, you can't make out what he's on about. It's the accent, which is... Um, as we mentioned earlier, this ignorance. Yeah. Um, people saying it's the accent. They're, they're saying they can't be understood. Um, Which well, is quite an ignorant type yes, thing it is. to say, isn't it? it? Is. Your accent. If, you know, just because he has a different accent doesn't mean he has any less understanding of you know the world. That's right. What he's saying exactly. And it's this this whole thing where people tend to shout. Yeah. Because you know it's just a different accent. And people <laughs> you to get speak. louder when and you, you get go louder away. as if if the person you're speaking to was deaf. Yeah. Uh, anyway, let's uh, move on, shall we, Miss? Okay. Uh, also, again, I think I just want to point out before we move on about the whole Steve Stefan. I think that's quite an important part, really. The fact that yes. he feels the need to have this uh, uh, English Western type name. Yeah, Western name. name. Yeah. Steve instead of Stefan. Okay, but again, I think, does it, do we refer to Stefan by the end of it, or? Miss, I hate to point this out, oh. but we've got Susie wrong there, look. S-U-S-I-E. Oh, sorry, that's our de deliberate, deliberate mistake. spelling mistake today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, um, okay, let's go and move off that side <laughs> then. Um, so symbolism and interpretation. So there's lots of kind of... Uh, uh, hidden meanings, reading between the lines again here. There are a lot in this story, lots yeah. of metaphors and similes as yeah. well. We talked earlier about the um, um, the way uh, a, a knot of teachers, the collective noun on line 25, a knot of teachers. Well, we actually Googled to see what the collective noun was for teachers. Whinge. whinge. A whinge of teachers. teachers. Oh, head, dear. Can I say a head teachers? <laughs> a whinge of a teachers. A whinge of teachers. Yeah. Anyway, here we have the symbolic meaning of the poem. Now, the poem is within the story. Mother, I've lost the words you gave me. Now, when, when we're born, the country we're born in and that language we, we speak is known as our mother tongue. Yeah, so it's the first language that you learn. Yes. Um, there is a famous poem we used to do at GCSE called um, Search for My Tongue, which is a, a poem about losing your native voice. And if like, um, uh, sorry, what's she Carla. called? Carla. <laughs> if like Carla in the story, she hasn't spoken Polish for six years or so, then she's going to lose it. Yeah. Uh, since she was six, rather. Exactly. And uh, again, uh, one of the key things that you were pointing out earlier, Miss, is that the father was actually the one that decided yes. not to let Carla continue to speak Polish. Line 15, then my father put a stop to it. And, well, at first I thought he was full of good intentions, saying, you'll get her mixed up now she's going to school. What use is Polish ever going to be... Um, to her, but I'm not so sure. I think, you know, yeah. he probably thought she's never going to use it. Waste of time. Shouldn't be doing it. Mm. So she lost um, her mother tongue. Yeah. And also it's her mother who is Polish and she's yes. lost that heritage. She's lost that connection to her mother's roots. So again, 
I know it is literally called Mother's Tub, but could yeah. we be linking it in, perhaps, yes, with what she's yeah. lost? Yeah. Because, yes, you could be. Mm. Uh, the bird as well, it sang and sang until it died. I think that's quite a... Yeah, I think that, again, represents her language, doesn't it? It sang to Yes. Her, she's lost it. She used to know that, that song. She used to sing that song with her mother, and, again, she's lost that. She, yeah. she can't remember it. Yeah, there's a famous um, Maya Angelou uh, novel, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, and it's kind of like that a little bit if yeah. you don't use that voice it is lost it's lost yeah, yeah. And i think that's a bird in the in the mind yeah and then finally the tie um this is again the strong thing of the metaphor of the tie it represents something else it was a flag from another country a better country than either of us, of us lived in Another thing with the tie, and when we were doing this um, as a group, we talked about the ties that we have between people. Mm. And there is certainly a tie that evolves between Stefan and Carla. So, I mean, that um, that importance of the tie could have yeah. that double meaning. It has. It's got that link between the two people. And here, I think we were discussing this before. What does this mean, a better country than even of, either of us lived in? And we thought that perhaps it represents this this hope where people are not judged upon accents or, or marginalised because of you know where they come from, etc. Maybe it's this country where people connect literally because of you know shared interests or yeah. as equals and you know this better place. I think that's a, a good explanation for it. Yes, yes. without the Val Valerie Kenwoods of the world. Right? Yes, without. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then uh, let's have a look at themes. It's, I don't know if you can hear the rain behind it's us. It's absolutely <laughs> pouring it's down here, down. so if you yeah. can hear, we've got some background the noise. Uh, noise today. Okay, so themes, this is what, the reading between the lines, what's going on in this? And we thought, we have, Miss? Yes, we've got heritage, assimilation, meaning... Um, um, when you become totally become part, it, yes, in, in culture. another culture, yeah. the we bigotry and ignorance. That's the two two ladies at the end when yeah. they're having their conversation. Culture, we've said, and our preconceived ideas of other people yeah, based on where they're from, yeah. or you know, not again, really getting to know. Them. Yeah, and it's with, you know, Stefan, his appearance is quite key to this as well. They yeah. talk about how his tie was too big and too bold. What, who, who who gets to say well, what's too bright and too bold, you know? Yeah. And, his, and his suit is, is a bit different. Yeah. He stands out, and, and it's that kind of snap decision people often make just by looking at That's people right. going, oh, okay, so he's different. Yeah. Yeah. So there are themes that we really need to concentrate on. Okay. And then, again, we want to talk about structure. As you know, we've got to compare it to the Story Mountain. Does it follow a normal structure? Lots of references to time passing in this story, which kind of moves it along, because um, there has to be that time between the sending of letters and the receiving of letters. So a lot of the um, paragraphs begin with... Um, the next morning break or you know when they receive the letter so references to time yeah but it does follow like a chronological order it does it progresses kind of traditionally but we do have jump jumping forward in time yes yeah. okay so do yeah think about your story mountain da, 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 da. okay and then what we <laughs> sorry Pat. starting to sing now yeah we thought we'd uh, working with your shoulder partner apparently but we're going to leave you with another uh, exam style type of question so what do you think the author is trying to suggest about Stefan's personality through his tie? And again, use evidence to support your answer using a P paragraph. Okay, and do so, the, the easiest way of doing this is kind of just sitting down and making yourself answer the question, maybe for 10 minutes, quarter of an hour, practice your writing and see how you get on. And please get in touch with us to let us know um, how you're finding the, this. Uh, yeah. the, uh, or any special requests of anything you'd like to, uh, for us to cover. Exactly. Okay, and you can contact us through this, leave a message or on our uh, Twitter page. Yep. All right, thanks very much. Thank you very we'll much. We'll see you next time, hopefully. Look forward to it. Bye, Bye then.